Okay, take your Bibles, Ephesians 1. Put your hands your Bible says, this is God's holy word. Holy men of old spoke as they were moved upon by the Holy Spirit. That supernatural anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon Quibus and myself tonight. Him to teach and me to hear, and I will bear good fruit in Jesus' name. If the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, if He said to Moses, go tell the children of Israel, I am that I am, go tell them I am a send you. It's not only a blank check, that's what we said lately. It's more than a blank check. It's who you can be in God. Because when Jesus Christ appeared as the beloved Son, and we know that we are now accepted in the beloved. When Jesus Christ came, this is what he said. I am. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the door. I am the light of the world. I am the fountain of living water. I am the door to the sheepfold. I am the good shepherd, you know. Uh, I am. I am. I am. Now, if I am in Christ... Colossians 3. And if I am hidden with Christ in God, if I am risen with Christ, Ephesians 2, 8. If I am seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, verse 6. If I am that, then I can say the same things that God said, Jesus said. I can stand up and say, I am a son of the living God. I am a partaker of the divine nature. I am a son of God. I am chosen. I am one. I am cleansed. I am righteous. We that have the deposit, the down payment, the earnest of the Spirit, the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan in ourselves. For what thing? For the salvation of our body. Romans 8 with Ephesians 1 with 2 Corinthians 5. I long to be clothed with my body from heaven. I don't want to go to heaven. I want to get something from heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. It is is in heaven. We got to get that resurrection body that we can just appear at places walk and do the supernatural the works that I do shall you do also because I go to my father and there's the promise of the Holy Spirit being our portion and we got to step into it we got to get it we got to go for it and we're going to have it that's who I am and I realize I got to confess it the whole earth is groaning waiting with earnest expectation for this sons of God to manifest in great glory and in great power first there's a Thessalonians 5 verse 23, I pray to God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there we have again Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. If he then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above where Christ is at the right hand of the Father. And do not think on the things that are below. For your lives are hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, verse 4, which is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. There's so many scriptures. Romans 9 verse 23 says, 22 says, If God wanted to show His wrath on those people that were disobedient, but because of His mercy, because of us, who are vessels that He has prepared for His glory, He decided rather to be merciful and show His grace. So God is not upset. He already took out His anger on Jesus on the cross. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, the Lord bless you. It's stuff that we need to say. We need to say who we are. We need to confess it. For 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says, Because we have received the same spirit of faith, we speak as it is written. We have believed, therefore we have spoken. Because you believe, you must speak. Come on, Romans 10 verse 6. The righteousness which is of faith speaks. So verse 15. For this reason... I mean, I just gave you an introduction of the first 14 verses. Now Paul says, for this reason. In other words, what I just said to you, because of that reason, for this reason, who you are, accepted, chosen, blessed, you know, 
Because I have heard of your faith in the Lord. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And your love towards all the saints, the people of God. Listen, this is where we're going to just jump into it tonight. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. In other words, Paul had a lot of other stuff to pray for, but in his long prayer and his long business schedule and, you know, going from prison to prison, you know, and in the meantime, going from one prison to the other, he had some opportunity to preach and then he was locked up again. Then he quickly wrote another letter. Then he was released and, you know, sent to another prison and then he was stoned and then they raised him from the dead and then he was dropped down in a basket and then, you know, a snake bit him and then he shook the thing off in the fire and then he raised the dead people and then he made the sick well and, you know, then he was locked up in prayer. So in the meantime, he said, I also mention you in my prayers. You know? So did he say, Ephesian church, and then he went on. Listen to the mentioning of this guy. I do not stop to mention you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul says, I do not cease to pray to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I read that, it was like God stopped me and said, this is exactly what I told them. In Luke chapter 11, the disciples, after they saw the miracles he did, hmm? they, hey man, Peter, how do you think? No, James, I don't know. Thaddeus, what do you say? Hey, Matthew, I don't know. Hmm? What do you say, Judas. Yeah, I know, you know, you know. I mean, they're discussing and, you know, I said, let's just watch him. Look at him, man. There he goes praying again. Huh? I mean, he just healed the sick. Now he's back in the mountain, you know, deep in the night. Hey, man, he's still praying, man. Huh? Luke says, after they watched him pray, they came and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. They never asked him, teach us how to do miracles. Yeah. Not once in the Gospels that they say, teach us how to do miracles. Because they saw the result of his prayer life. Yeah. So they said, Jesus, teach us to pray how John also taught his disciples to pray. And he said, when you pray, do not be like those dudes that stand on the street corner. Don't stand there to seen by people and making these long prayers that's rituals, you know, and everybody read out the book. This morning's prayer, you know, Sunday, Lent Sunday, the 15th of May, we read together the prayer of the Lord and we pray together for the nation, you know. Jesus said, don't pray like those guys. But when you pray, say. In other words, this is not a meditative prayer. When you pray, say. Our Father, I do not cease to pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is He? Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. We forgive all those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hey, do you still pray that? Hmm? Jesus said, when you pray, say. So, every morning I wake up and I say, Oh, thank you, Lord, for this brand new day. Thank you for life. Thank you that my youth is renewed like an eagle. My flesh is fresher than a child. Thank you that I am what your word says that I am. I want to worship you. I want to praise you for who you are. I want to bless you. Thank you for my wife. I bless her. I pray for her. I pray for my three sons, their three wives, their children. I bless them, my Father, in Jesus' name. And then I like our Father, which art in heaven. Father, I thank you that you are my Father. Thank you that as a Father, you know what I need before I pray. 
Thank you that I do so many wrong stuff, but yet you say, if I that are evil now have to do good to my children, how much more will my Father in heaven do to me? Thank you. Thank you that you are my Father. Our Father which art in heaven, thank you that I can be raised with Christ, seated in heavenly places with Christ. Thank you that I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh God, I pray that your name will be sanctified because of my life. Wherever I go, that people will worship God, that your light will shine through me. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. God, let your kingdom come. Your kingdom is power. Your kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I pray that righteousness shall prevail. Righteousness shall go before me. The glory of God shall be my rear God. Oh God, angels are camping round about me. Oh, let your kingdom come. Your kingdom is power. Your kingdom is within me. Oh Lord, thank you right, right from the ends. And then I go on. And, oh, I better get up. Hey, wake up. Hallo, my vrouw, je lekker geslaan. Oké. Okay. Every day. You know why? Because he said, when you pray, say. You can do with it what you want to. But you know what Jesus said in Matthew 6, jumping from Luke 11? He says, when you pray, your father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. Therefore, pray, our father. In other words, Jesus said, if you pray this prayer, you'll get a reward on it. Amen. Not just a reward, an open reward. So what you see here is because I get a reward by praying our Father. And Jesus said, I will be rewarded if I pray that prayer. So I pray it and I'm rewarded. Amen. Verse 17. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you see every verse in the Bible? You know, it's so important. If you just read it slow, there's so much to it. The Father of glory, there it is. Oh man, the Father of glory. You have been prepared for glory. Hey, 1 Corinthians 2 says, you know, verse 6 and 7 and 8. If the princes of this world knew who the Lord of glory was, they would never have crucified him. You know, then 1 Peter comes. He says, all the prophets prophesied of the sufferings of the Christ and the glory that should follow. In other words, after the cross, on the agenda is glory must now follow. So what is creation waiting for? For the glorious manifestation of the sons of God. So the agenda is not going to change before glory has invaded us. Come on, Numbers 14, 21, when God was so upset and he wanted to destroy the house of Israel, and Moses said, oh God, you, God, you can't destroy them because when we were on the mountain, you said you are good and long-suffering and gentle and kind and your mercies endure forever. How can you destroy them? And God says, Moses, at your word, I will not destroy them. But I promise you today, as sure as I live, my glory shall fill all the earth. How's the glory going to fall? Is there going to come a smoke like in the garden of Eden invade the earth and the mist will no 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 we are the carriers of the glory 2 Timothy 2 22 we are the carriers of the glory 2 Corinthians 5 4 verse 5 and 6 we are the carriers of the glory Romans 9 verse 23 we are the carriers of the glory John 1 verses 11 through 14 we are the carriers of the glory thank you Paul says, I pray that this God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may grant you. Who's you? You that know now you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. You that know now you are justified, you are sanctified, you are accepted in the beloved, you are chosen, you are without blame, you are seated in heavenly place. You who know who you are in Christ, I pray for you. Say, I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. I believe I am in Christ. I am a new creation. And these truths are for me. In Jesus' name. Okay. I pray that he may grant you. Oh, here it comes. A spirit. Can you read it out loud? A spirit of wisdom. And... Revelation, what? In the knowledge 
I I think we first stop. <laughs> Dear Father, our Father waits hard in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For those in Christ, this is my prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And then he goes on. And then knowledge and know is repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated in the next two verses. But before we get that, you know, because, man, I pray that God will give us wisdom. God will give us understanding that we can know this stuff. And God said to me, you know, they've been crying for this wisdom and understanding and, you know, stuff for years. But they miss the word. It's a spirit of wisdom. It's a spirit of understanding. It's a spirit that will take you into the knowledge. It's not wisdom. Solomon had wisdom and he had 700 wives. Okay, no remarks. That's not very wise. I mean, the problems that the people come talk to me with one. Imagine with 700. Do I now want wisdom or a spirit of wisdom? Now, when God started revealing this stuff to me, it happened in this way. We bought this drive-in theater in 1989 for a very good price. But I had a vision and a dream in 1982, while we were missionaries in Wenderland, God showed me in four dreams in one month how I will buy the drive-in outside Stilfontein, close to Klagsdorp, a big city with a smaller city with a drive-in outside the city. So that was the only geographical place in South Africa where there was a small city with a drive-in outside the city close to a big city. So it must have been this place. And God showed me exactly what's going to happen. How there's going to be a tent next to the highway. How there's going to be a building on this. Then there's going to be a bigger tent and then this building. The shape, everything in 1982. So 1989, we bought the drive-in. Hmm? 1987, we're having a crusade in our tent. A miracle crusade. Power of God is there. The very first night... For well, the very first day of the crusade, that afternoon, I buried my father. He died the Friday, we started the Monday, and we buried him the Monday. I remember, yeah, God, now this is the way to start this awesome crusade. I buried my father this afternoon, this night I must stand up and tell everybody what a great God we have. Hallelujah, well, bless God, we're going to have an awesome week, conferences, you know. Now we're at the tent, 1987. The following day, somebody phoned me and said, the drive-in is for sale. I said, ah, the dreams. Immediately made contact. We only bought it two years later. But now, my dad is dead. Two years. I am a gentle person. I'm not a fighter. I don't like cursing. I don't like fighting. I don't like screaming. I don't like it. I like peace. I like joy. I like calm, happy peace. It's me. Since I was a small boy, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. At the age of 16, I started drifting away from Jesus. I started getting involved with a lot of ugly stuff, and I became a fighter, and I became ugly till I was 24, came back to Jesus, and everything picked up where I was, and this life is, this portion is gone, and there I just went on where I was. But I'm a very hard worker. There's nothing I think that I can't do. I can do electricity, I can do plumbing, I can do building, I can fix cars, I can fix electronic stuff. I just got a mind for everything. Our old church, the one wall I built and the floor I threw and, you know, I love stuff. 
Now we, we bought the drive-in, and we're going to start a Christian school, 1989. Hmm? Then I realized everything that I've learned, I've actually learned from my father. Amen. But my father was not a gentle man. He was not a soft man. He was a hard, stern. He was worse than a computer. <laughs> you know, because the computer has a cursor. Okay? Okay, forget it. So, my father was rough. But I always admired my father's hands because he could work so hard. Never realizing that my hands look just like my father's hands. And Elise always said, I've got such strong hands, you know? And truly, you know, my hands were strong. I could open a Coke bottle with my two fingers. You know, yeah? That was just strong hands. But I never realized my hands looks just like my father's hands. So we got the drive-in. And all of a sudden, for no reason, I started getting like bad temper. I start, if my wife says something, I throw something. Hey, my dad used to do this, man. They always say, I heard people say, Ay, yeah, you just like your father. You just like your mother. You like your uncle. You like your aunt. You like your grandma. You know, you grow up with stuff like it. And I thought, hey, nobody ever said I'm anything like my father or my mother. Now you're, you know, I do stuff like my father. And I started cursing. And I remember Sina coming to me one day. And she said, Kubis, what has happened to you? Where's that gentle, kind, meek man? Where's the man that everybody said, if you want the fruit of the Spirit, you can just go look at Kubis and Rensburg and you get it. What happened to you? I said, ah, I don't know. <laughs> Yo, I got so upset one day. I said to Liz, can I show you what I could do when I was young? I said, you know, I did the, you, you know, you know, the, you know, you know, you know, I can show you. And I did, Oscar. Nine holes through a door. Choo, choo, nine, nine. Choo, choo, choo. You laugh. <gasps> and I fell on the floor and I grabbed my head. I said, what on earth am I doing? And I screamed. And I came the next day to this drive-in. Now we're building a school. And all the pipes are here where the speakers were on for the drive. So I started cutting them off with a cutting torch. In the day, everybody was working. So I was... <laughs> And all of a sudden, I looked and I saw my father's hands. And I took that cutting torch and I threw it and I jumped up and I said, I don't want Frick van Rensburg spirit. Amen. And God showed to me this whole revelation. He said, there's the Holy Spirit. There's the spirit of Jesus. There's the spirit of Christ. There's the spirit of Jesus Christ. There's the spirit of power. There's a spirit of signs, wonders, miracles. There's a spirit of jealousy. There's a spirit of bitterness. There's a spirit of hatred. All in the Bible. There's a spirit of meekness. There's a spirit of gentleness. All in the Bible. That's got nothing to do with the person. It's a spirit. It's not a ghost. It's a spirit. A spirit like when you walk into a place and you say, Chop, but there's an awesome spirit in this place. What you mean is the atmosphere in this place is sweet. Amen. You walk into a place, you say, hey man, spirit in this place is like aggressive, man. You just want to do it. You go into a spot. You know, yeah. and God showed me, people have spirits with them. You come to a person and you say, yeah, that guy's got such a gentle spirit. What do you mean? It's not his spirit. His spirit is him. But there's a gentleness around Yo, that spirit's got an anger spirit with you. Yo, that person's got such a bitter spirit. Is anybody with me now? Hmm? Yo, that's, that person's got such a sweet spirit. You know, you just want, oh, there's such a peaceful spirit in this place. There's a, such a spirit of anger with that person. There's such a spirit of, you know, intimidation with that person. There's people, when they come next to me, I'm totally intimidated. And I say stuff just to break myself loose from that thing. If they come into my presence, I feel like I shrink. Okay, you've never met such people. No, you've never met them, huh? Hmm? Of course you never met them. You have, man. 
There's people that are shorter than me. When they stand next to me, I shrink. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about now? A spirit of intimidation. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, he says, I long to be with you so that I can impart some spiritual gift to you. I long, I long to be with you so that I can impart any, some spiritual gift to you. He says, so that by the mutual faith of one another, we could all be encouraged at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. 